It's midday. Good afternoon and welcome to Draw News Today. We're live on DSV Channel 4 to 1, Go TV Channel 1 to 5. Across all our social media handles, we're Draw News on TV. Coming up, hundreds of protesters take to the streets of Accra to demand an end to illegal mining and the release of 54 remanded hashtag Stop Galamsey Now protesters. Also, government working to restore lands affected by mining will tell you why and how. And later, the opposition National Democratic Congress poised to win all six parliamentary seats in the Northeast region. We'll take you live there. Stay for these plus business, sports and world news coming up in the next 60 minutes. My name is Faustina Safo. Take a seat and be my guest. Thanks for choosing us. We're your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Now, President Kufado has reiterated the commitment of his government to ensure a free and fair, peaceful elections in the December polls. He disclosed that though he wants the NPP presidential candidate, Dr. Balmia, to win, he will not subvert the will of the people. President Kufado has been speaking at a meeting with the clergy and Muslim clerics. Rafiq Salam reports from WA. President Akufuado won our meeting with the clergy, Muslim clerics, members of the Upper West Regional House of Chiefs, and some community leaders in the Upper West Region, hint on three fronts. First is to thank the people of the Upper West Region and the country at large for the honor done him to be the president of the country and their continued cooperation put as relative peace to the country. Second is to tell the achievements of his administration and lastly to urge the people to vote for the flag bearer of the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, to be president to continue his good works. What we have done in this region, in education, in health, in road infrastructure, in agriculture, in the industrial development of our country, and I have, um, with modesty, but also with pride, I can say that in all these areas, I have improved considerably the state of affairs in the Upper West Region compared to what I inherited in 2017. President Akufado touched on the implementation of the free senior high school policy, which has given opportunity to major students to benefit improvement in the quality of education in the country and expansion of infrastructural projects. The road network in the Upper West Region has increased from 5,797.41 kilometers in 2016 to 6,741.8 kilometers by the end of 2022. This reflects by the end of 2022 these figures do not include the expansion that is being recorded in 2023 as well as what is going on in 2024. But even then, by 2016-2022, we have seen a 16% growth in the expansion of the road network in the Upper East, Upper West. They include asphaltic overlays, they include the completion of some notable roads, Wa Hain, Kaliu Sankana Tapo, Wa Viera, Nadoli, Laura Hamile. And now we also see the first town road to the border, Hamile border. Despite the significant achievements that he touted about, he considered that there's still more to be done. There's still a lot of work to be done. But that work has begun and we will continue to do it. Especially, you can be sure that if you listen to my plea and allow my vice president to come and stand here in my shoes, that work will be completed. Though he sees Dr. Mahmoud Baumir as his anointed successor, he will not make any attempt to subvert the will of the people. As president, I cannot impose anybody on you. I don't have the power and I don't have the interest. 
I want the decision just as I was elected. The next person to stand here in my shoes will also be elected by the people of Ghana. He concluded by mocking at the NDC flag bearer, John Ramani Mohamed's claim of breaking the aid because of his position on the ballot paper, stating that it is not a good sign of victory. I see that the, pres the former president is saying all kinds of things about the number eight that he has. That he chose. And that it, does, it means he's going to win. Well, breaking the eight and having the number eight, that's not a good sign at all. It's not a good sign. Our game is to break the eight, and you pick that eight. Yeah, that is very simple. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wa. Well, the National Democratic Congress says it is poised to win all six parliamentary seats in the Northeast region. The NDC currently holds two seats, with the NPP holding four. The Regional Communications Officer of the Party, Al Hassan Gafaru, and the Deputy Regional Organizer, Fatawa Karande, say it's possible because the NPP presidential candidate, Dr. Bamiya, who hails from the region, has failed the people. We'll take you there and speak to Maxwell Agboba shortly for a wrap of the one of the NDC flag bearer tour of the Northeast region. But let me bring in my colleague Rafik Salam for our earlier story about the president saying he's committed to a free and fair election. Rafik, what else has the president been saying? Um, the president also spoke about uh, the number of projects that they have brought into the upper West region, talking about uh, the water uh, systems, which has improved uh, the water quality uh, of the people. He also spoke about the number of uh, chips compounds uh, that were uh, constructed and uh, numbering them up to about four to one. Let me tell you that this visit of the president uh, uh, was uh, uh, low profile, uh, you know, uh, uh, because uh, not many people were aware that the president was in town. And so when he arrived at the airport, uh, the usual, you know, uh, party, you know, uh, guys who are always there riding motorbikes and also do the acrobatics were absent. And so he moved close, uh, straight to the venue of the meeting. And so even at the meeting, when he was addressing the clergy, the Muslim clerics, and also the chiefs, um, you could see that uh, uh, there was absolute silence uh, at the hall. And then, you know, there was no reaction from the faces of these people that he was speaking to. The only people who were here, who were at the hall and were only cheering the president, was some two dozen supporters of the MPP who were seated at the far end. And so it was a low-key, you know, low-profile visit of the president. And he, delayed, he wants to tell the people, thank the people on uh, the a mandate that they have given and also to account to them their stay in his stewardship. Mm. Thank you, Rafik Salam, for bringing us that. Now, we told you earlier that we'll bring you a wrap of John Mahama's tour of the Northeast region. We'll bring you that shortly, but hundreds of protesters have taken to the streets of Accra, asking for an end to Galamse and the immediate release of 54 individuals who took part in the hashtag Stop Galamse Now demonstration. A fortnight ago, the protesters have expressed their frustration over government's failure to keep illegal mining, which has led to severe environmental degradation, pollution of water bodies, and a destruction of farmlands across the country. Carrying placards with slogans like Save Our Land, Save Our Future, and End Galamse Now, they are marching through key areas of the capital, calling for swift and decisive action to halt illegal mining activities that have devastated several communities. My colleague, Kenneth Jesse, is on the ground. He joins us live with more. Kenneth, you've been engaged with some of the protesters. What else have they been telling you? Kenneth, you have to position rightly for me to hear you. Um, we're just taking you live to the grounds. Consensus since they have begun their three-day demonstration. They want government to release all the protesters arrested during the hashtag Stop Galamse Now protest that happened weeks back. Kenneth, you're engaging some of the protesters. What else have they been telling you? The demonstrators have been marching. 
watching all morning from the Legon Stadium. I've been passing with many impressive streets there now. I got into Calvary. And then from there, they will be uh, passing through other streets of Accra. And of course, they will be presenting a petition to the Attorney General demanding the immediate release of the remanded 53 protesters. And of course, one of their demands also is an end to illegal mining. I've been speaking to a leadership of the group earlier today. They say that they want an immediate end to illegal mining. They want a declaration of a state of emergency on the menace, which they say is killing people faster than anything. So as you can see, there are a lot of them holding series of placards. Uh, I can see someone here who says that COVID-19 isolated Galamse is poisoning us. Would you like to have a word with us? Yeah, so uh, most people see me and they think I'm wearing a COVID-19 suit. What I'm trying to say is, this suit is not just used for COVID. It's used for everything that is dangerous to our body, to protect us, the health personnel. That's the same way that we have to see Galamse as something that is a threat to our health and that we need to take every step to stop it. So we need to stop Galamse. Okay, thank you very much. If my uh, camera person can come forward and get closer to the protesters uh, who are largely behind us. And of course, they've turned out in your numbers today, demanding for two major things, an earn to illegal mining and the release of the 53 remanded protesters who uh, protested against illegal mining two weeks ago and have been remanded into police and prison custody for two weeks by an Accra circuit court. Of course, uh, the protests have uh, been largely peaceful because at the beginning, the police and the protesters went into an agreement that there should be a peaceful protest and that if the protest is not peaceful, the police will use any force to disperse the crowd. And so far, they've ahead to all of that. Well, I'm, I want to talk to you uh, briefly. You're, you're live on joining. This is River Pra. This is why we are all fighting. This is why we are all fighting. This is not tea. Wait, and no coco. This is no coco. This is River Pra. All the way from Takradi here. This is River Pra. Look, 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 look. This is why we are all fighting. This is River Pra. This is why we are fighting. Save River Pra. Save Ghana. You are killing us. You are poisoning us. Say something. Say something. Ghana government. Akufado, say something. We can't be drinking this. We can't be drinking this. We are tired. Akufado, we are tired. Please, say something. Say something. This is no cocoa. This is no cocoa. This is water. Water. What we are drinking. What we are drinking. This is what we are drinking. Please, Akufado, Ghana government, say something. Please, please, say something. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, that is one of the protesters who, uh, you know, has a sample of the Pra River, who which has turned brown, and uh, he's been pouring it down, showing us the uh, real threats of illegal mining, which has turned that water brown. I want to speak to another person here. Uh, uh, where where have you come from to join this protest? I'm coming from Afanko Okay. I mean, why have you found the need to join it? Are you seeing this right here? Yes. What do you assume it is? What do you assume it is? I'm asking a question. I want to believe that is a polluted river. Sure. Yeah. And this is what we are fighting for. This is why I'm personally here. The, the, no, 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 no. This is no, no. This is. Are you sure? Oh yes, serious. This is why I'm personally here. I'm here for, for no other interest than stop Galamsi. And the funny thing is, people might be in Accra thinking that they are not affected by Galamsi. But then let me ask you a question. Which part of Accra do we farm? Do you know where our food stars come from? Our food stars come from this polluted environment. They, are, they use this same water to water the crops, and th these are the same crops you consume. So the crops you are eating, being it, tomatoes, being it, yam, anything at all we are consuming is being affected by this. See, regardless of your political uh, color, regardless of your political color, uh, your color, I don't care. What I care is that Galamse is stopped so that we can have quality water. And the most funny thing is that these politicians, I mean the frontiers of this whole Galamse thing, 
when the country should get worse, they will either fly and fly their nuclear family with them, or they will start importing water, of which most of us can't do it. So that's the only right reason why I'm here. I'm here for no other reason than stop Galamse and free the citizens. Okay, thank you very much. So that's one of the that, that's one of the protesters, of course, who like many of them is here for an end to illegal mining and release of the remanded protesters. You're live and joining you to say you have a word or two to share with us. What is it? My name is Ali Skidu. The president don't stick bets, but he's taking best tasks from us. The president, they've messed everything. Sid Galam says he's killing. He's killing a lot of people. Now go to Kolebu Hospital and check everything that's going on. They, they must do something. They have to release the those they've arrested. They have to release them immediately. We are pleading the government, do what is right. The youth, now we want to, we want to, we are tired though. Government, president, I beg, talk to your people so that we all will feel free in the country. You Go. said we are in uh, we, 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 we are but now so you are bread. Then see what you are doing. Now everybody is tired of you. You don't stick bets, you want to take tax bets. Please, Mr. President, do the right thing at the right time. Thank you very much. Uh, that's also the concern of one protester who chipped in uh, the betting tax there, saying that uh, the president does not stick bet, but he has placed taxes on the bets and wants it to scrap to be scrapped in addition uh, with uh, uh, an end to illegal mining and the release of the 53 remanded protesters. Uh, so, of course, uh, they are behind me, most of them, they, they are behind, and of course there's a sizable number of them also who are ahead of us. Uh, they have uh, 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 many placards, many inscriptions calling for an end to illegal mining. They say that illegal mining, if we don't take care, will kill us faster than our dreams. So, so far we have heavy security presence. A lot of police personnel are here uh, to provide security to the protesters. Of course, they are marching all the way from here to the Attorney General's office to present a petition to the Attorney General to demand an immediate release of the protesters. From there, they'll climax everything at the Black Star Square, where they will hold a vigil in honor of the 53 men and women who have been remembered Mandated into prison and police custody for their involvement in the Stop Dalam Saying Now protest, which took place some two weeks ago. I mean, they have defended them saying that they did no wrong for seeking for the betterment of the country. All they did was to exercise their right to protest against the illegal mining menace. Some have said that the real criminals are sleeping in your beds and innocent citizens have been arrested and put behind bars for no crime done. So, as we speak now, there's been a halt. The protesters have temporarily halted their march. The police have also halted uh, to my right. You can see a lot of police officers, heavily armed police officers. I saw you at the last demonstration, yes, correct? Yes, and you are here too. Mm. So yeah, um, I'm back here again for this particular protest because um, I was at a protest. I was on the protest ground the whole three days, and I could have literally been kidnapped by the police and locked up in cells, as my brothers and sisters are there. And that's why I'm here in solidarity, in support and in unity with them to ensure they free the citizens and also end what I'm saying now. Okay, and then do you think that, so today you are presenting a petition to the Attorney General to seek for the immediate release of your co your colleagues who were who were arrested by the police. Do you think that that, that plea will be heeded to? Um, they should. I, I, what, depending on the number of this, I can't tell, but they should immediately grant bail to the arrested and kidnapped citizens because all they were demanding for was end Galamse. The same president is the one who told us that he was going to put his presidency on the line to help Ghanaians fight Galamse. So we're just reminding him about the promise he made to Ghanaians and now he wants to use his power and the police to silence us. And those days of silence and temerity are over. We are rising against this oppression and injustice in the system. And we demand that the president releases the people immediately and now he should release the citizens. And like I was saying, the form of injustice and oppression ongoing in Ghana currently 
Nobody should sit down and watch it because in the previous protest last year, I was one of those who was arrested by the police, kidnapped and brutalized heavily by the Ghana police. And the police need to be very professional and they are supposed to protect the protest and not disrupt the protest. And so that is it. I wanted to, yeah. You, you've taken part in a series of demonstrations. Why do you think none of them has yielded any results? Because we don't have a listening government. Governance is all about everybody's participating and contributing to ensure that we get good results for the country. But we have governments who don't listen. So when citizens go out on the street and cry and make all the noise, government just turns a blind ear to all the cries and does anything. So yeah, we are hoping that this time around we are going to push them to listen. Because this will not be the end of the protest. When this protest is not answered, when our calls are not answered, we are going to move to a different demand. And that is total shutdown Ghana and ensure that our voices are heard. So this is just the beginning. We are not done yet. All right, I want to thank you very much uh, for that. And of course, uh, we earlier spotted this banner, which uh, shows a polluted river. You see uh, kids consuming uh, from uh, uh, drinking this polluted water here. I mean, you, you, you are holding this banner. How significant is this banner for you? It's, it's sad to talk about it. You know, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our uncles are in the house and they think that we are fighting against politics. This is not politics. This is as a result of illegal mining. This is what we are fighting for. We are not fighting for MPP, we are not fighting for NDC. None of them. We are not fighting any political party. This is what we are fighting for. We are not holding the banner just to, I mean, throw away any party. We want to throw away this. We don't want to see this again. This is so sad. This is the route that people can hear us, but they've blocked it. This is the route that people can hear us, but they've blocked it currently. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here because I'm a concerned citizen of this country. And I always stand up for what is right. There's a need for each and every Ghanaian to stand up for what is right. Look at what is going on in this country. And when people come out to protest, you, are, you harass them, you embarrass them, you, you, why? We need to stand up for ourselves in this country. When people, when, look, at the, look at the exodus going on here. People are living, they are youths, they are living. They are living this country. Why? And when we stand for it, then you are, are, are about to harass us. No. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, I, I've spoken to some of them. You, you want to speak to us? You want to speak to us? Okay. Uh, we have another, another person here uh, who wants to speak to us. I, I consider you are from the media, correct? Exactly. So, why have you found the need to join them? Well then, it is Ghana and then it is our country. No other place but then here in Ghana. And then we are calling out onto all the brotherhood in the, the various universities across the nation. Katanga, Casford, Haiti or Conti, we need you all here. Let's help fight Galamsi. Let's help stop the illegal mining. It is your land, it is my land. Let's stay together. Let's fight this. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much as well, of course as it has become a, a significant thing for them. You see most of them lie or sit in the middle of the road after every few minutes of, of, of walk. I mean, uh, they said that they wanted to use the road to my right, but as it stands now, it has been blocked by the police. And of course, there's been a few complaints from the protesters that they did not agree with the police that that place will be blocked. So, I mean, this is the current scene here. Uh, of course, uh, all we can do play this, it makes Jack a door boy. So, uh, most of them are cheering now.
Well, this protest is going to be on for the next three days and we'll be live on the ground to give you all the updates. In a related development, though, government says it is expanding the Ghana landscape restoration and small-scale mining project to intensify land restoration efforts in the country. Minister for Environment, Science and Technology Ophelia Menza-Hayford believes the project expansion is a crucial step towards addressing the environmental degradation caused by small-scale mining activities. And Abwachi Adam has more in the following report. The Ghana Lands Restoration and Small-Scale Mining Project, which was initially launched to restore degraded lands and promote sustainable small-scale mining practices, has been successful in its initial phase. The project has helped to restore thousands of hectares of land, created jobs and improved the livelihoods of local communities. During a tour of some beneficial districts in the Ashanti region, the Environment Minister Ophelia Mensah Hayford noted despite the progress made, more needs to be done to address the scale of environmental degradation in the country. I think their capacity has been built and so they are calling for an extension and people want us to extend our frontiers by seven other farmers. And so in going forward, I think we are also going back put up our reports and then look for more funds to assist uh, more farmers uh, do such such projects for us to reclaim all the degraded lands and then also restore uh, some of uh, uh, restore some of the nutrients that we've lost in the soil it's very impactful and the benefits is not only to the farmers but to Ghana as a nation and as a whole uh, this is because uh, I think globally we are fighting climate change and then planting of the trees and then greening our environment as part of uh, the control measures to, to control climate uh, change issues. And so I think it's, much, it's very impactful and so we want to encourage more farmers to plant the trees for us to be able to control the climate change. Because in getting more trees and greening, that is where we can build up our carbon that will com control the depletions up there. The extension of the project will enable the government to scale up its efforts and cover more areas affected by small-scale mining. Some farmers appreciated the government's efforts to help reclaim their degraded lands. <laughs> Me ye we nu nesia no mesen atrim amana ekesi achen de etisa ntijumedia onde bai de mani age ho pa ebroso project ne bai ye no ama makome nim bebri ko last year na project ne bai me fra enkran ko ensia ami tu ye omoka this year ya me ne moka se me fra enkran wo twe a onu zum tu ye omoka nti ama emu abia the farmers are, however, hoping to access fertilizers and other compensation to be productive. The minister says some concerns raised by the farmers will be addressed while efforts are being made to extend the project. I think uh, for the past two days we've been on the field and it's so exciting. Apart from one or two complaints, which is normal, and we've assured them that that fund is on its way very soon, they will have access to it. Everybody is excited and they've learned so much and now they are growing, mixed cropping and all that. For Joy News, Nana Bwachitang Kwe Yadom, Kumasi. Nana Bwachitang Yadom joins us live with more. Nana, how many farmers have so far benefited from this land restoration project? Well, firstly, it's been two years since the uh, Ministry of Land and Natural Resources and the Ministry for Environment, Science and Technology began this project. Mm. Um, in various regions, there are a number of um, farmers who have benefited from this project. In the Ashanti region alone, there are over 2,000 farmers who have benefited from the um, Ghana landscape restoration and small-scale mining project. Uh, going forward, government intends to expand the project to have a number of farmers get involved in, into this project to also make sure that the reclamation efforts um, are being intensified from degraded lands. Mm, thank you, Nana Bachi Iadum, for joining us with that. Well, health authorities in the Bono East region say they are targeting more than 200,000 children in its measles vaccination drive. Regional Director of Health, Dr. Paulina Clara Pia, says enough arrangements have been made to capture all children, including those within the region's island community. Nana Sabes has more in this report.
aged between 9 and 59 months aims at immunizing about 209,000 children within the Bono East Enclave to safeguard them against measles. The initiative, according to the Bono East Regional Director of Health Services, Dr. Paulina Clara Pia, is in response to a recent increase in measles cases over the past few years. The reason why it has become necessary for us to do it is that uh, we have started seeing uh, an increase in measles cases um, from 2020 to now. We have seen that um, each year our uh, measles cases um, have been going up. For example, 2024, we've been able to detect 43 cases as compared to 23 last year. Uh, and it's not only here in Bunuis, but it's all over, all over the country. So the plan is that we are trying to mop up or reach out every child who is susceptible to developing measles. So whether you've had a measles vaccine before or not, we are providing you uh, this opportunity to have the, the vaccine. And so what we are doing is for the region, we have a target of 209,000 people to vaccinate. Um, each uh, This has its own target. And so what we have done is that we have um, gotten the district to sensitize the general public and uh, stakeholders so that they can also mobilize the community for us and uh, for us to be able to uh, vaccinate these students. Dr. Paulina Clara Pia revealed that enough arrangements have been instituted to ensure that no child is left behind, including out of school children and those within the island communities. So one of the, the areas is that we are doing the study clinics where all our hospitals, our health centers, our chip compounds, our vaccination sites, that the community knows that they can go there and have the vaccination. And as joins us live with more, and as government is targeting nearly 200,000 children in the Bono East region with this vaccination. So far, how many have they achieved in terms of this target? As I speak to you, some 48,240 mm. uh, you know, children, uh, representing 23% uh, of uh, the targeted population, have been uh, vaccinated with regards to measles and rubella. Uh, in the same vein, you know, they're also giving vitamin A dose to these children. And uh, with regards to that as well, 45,598, representing 22% of uh, these children have been given vitamin A uh, dose as well. Uh, well, there were some few challenges with regards to this particular, uh, you know, vaccination exercise. Uh, they've been raised uh, in some parts of the region. And this has, in a way, affected the outdoor uh, team who are visiting some schools and uh, some communities. Uh, uh, beyond the uh, uh, within the island areas, uh, the good news, however, is that uh, regional director of health services, Dr. Paulina Clara Pia, told me that when the exercise ends on uh, October 6, there will be a mop-up exercise to uh, cover all those uh, children who are part of the target who have not been able to be uh, captured within the first few days. However, she says to report 43% within the first day in a five-day exercise. It's a signal that uh, the response has been massive and the region will be able to achieve its targeted you know, population. Mm, thank you, Anat Savid. Well, news just reaching us is that Ghana has recorded its first case of Mpox. We'll be getting updates from the head of our health desk here, Jaw News, Fred Smith. He joins us via Zoom. Fred, what are we learning? Fred, you have to unmute for me to hear you clearly. Um, news reaching us is that Ghana has recorded its yes. first case of Mpox and head of our health desk joins us with more. Fred Smith, what are we learning? Well, Fasina, so we are learning from a sick trip, mm. a Ghana Health Service sick trip, mm. that a total of 230 suspected cases are currently under investigation. Uh, however, one of them has confirmed, has been confirmed for Mpox virus at the National Public Health and Reference Laboratory after testing just two days ago. And this happened, this case is in the uh, Bia West District of the Western North. And this case is no longer in hospital. They've taken it out of the facility and being managed at home. But 229 cases are still uh, under investigations mm. for uh, Mpox virus. Mm. And the, the cases, as I mentioned to you, are spread across all 16 regions of Ghana with the Greater Accra, Central, Volta, and the Shanti regions having the highest number of cases. In the Greater Accra region, for instance, there's, there's about 37.8% 
of the total that we have uh, for for you there, there's luckily there's no confirmation of a death in in this so far. Mm. I know you've been working your sources in the Ministry of Health. What immediate measures are government putting in place to contain the spread? Well, government has already initiated the response mechanism and they've started the coordination. There's an alert on the confirmed MPOX case, which is to be issued by the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service shortly. The activation of district, regional and national public health emergency coordination structures are also being done. And then there's surveillance, which is also underway. It's part of this that we're able to detect the 230 cases that so far uh, have confirmed one for mm. MPOX. However, the CITREP indicated that there are gaps and some challenges in dealing with this. Mm. Now, they are saying that there's limited funding to support sustained laboratory testing and outbreak investigations. There's limited funding also to support sample transportation, especially from hard to reach areas such as the affected districts. And if you know where the West, where we've confirmed the case is, uh, it tells you why they're raising this concern. And they're also saying that there's a need for social support for sus suspected or confirmed cases who need community isolation. Mm, thank you, Fred Smith. His head of our help desk here are joining He's given us details. We'll be expanding the conversation in subsequent bulletins and reach out to the Ministry of Health to get updates on this. You're watching Draw News today. We'll be back with business, sports and showbiz shortly. Welcome back to Business on Join News today. My name is Winston Taki, and on to our first business story. Some civil society organizations, CSOs, including the Natural Resource Governance Institute and LGI, are calling for the establishment of electric vehicle manufacturing and assembly plants in Ghana to provide valuable training opportunities for tertiary students and boost economic growth. Speaking to Joy Business after meeting political parties on energy and extractive sector manifestos, Senior Program Officer for the NRGI, Dennis Jijiri, believes such facilities will support the country's energy transition. The dialogue explores the rules of the petroleum sector, environment and anti-corruption in political manifestos. It also focuses on extractive sector to promote energy security. Although the civil society organizations commended government for its effort in attracting many global vehicle assembling companies into the country, they believe the manufacturing of electric vehicles will reduce reliance on fossil fuels. Senior Programs Officer at the Natural Resources Governance Institute, Dennis Jeju, explains. Has courses around renewable energy, which means that they would be studying things related to electric vehicles as part of their course outline. It's important that we get these students the practical avenues to, to, to practicalize and sort of uh, learn and improve on these uh, uh, academic programs so that when they come out, they are not only theoretical students, but students who can really get into the industry and uh, get involved in the processes. And so we, we think that that is really important. And so it's not enough for government to keep touting uh, the number of car uh, manufacturers that have been brought into the country but to link it to clear directions where the world is going and we think that electric vehicle is the future whether we like it or not we know that lithium battery manufacturing is the future and some of those industries must be built um, in this country to add value to some of the natural resources like lithium uh, graphite uh, cobalt nickel and iron and others that we have in this country Speaking on behalf of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, Chairman of the Manifesto Committee on Mining, Dr. Tony Obin, emphasized the need for a proper management of electronic waste through the provision of some incentives. It's, it's now big money to manage the electronic waste. It is big money. The old computers, the old batteries and all that. So if you create the necessary incentive, including physical incentives, uh, make power available. Uh, people are going to produce 24-7. In fact, 24-hour economy can easily erupt from a situation where these things are collected and produced and, and then and, and value added. So they are no longer waste. Those so-called waste 
to become resources. They become inputs into some production cycle. The dialogue brought together representatives from key political parties to discuss their respective manifestos on how they plan to address the challenges and opportunities presented by energy transition. President Akufado has encouraged private sector players to support the promotion of STEM education in Ghana. Speaking at the 150th anniversary of Kimbu Senior High School Technical School, President Akufado said STEM education would benefit the private sector immensely through increased investment. Speaking at the ceremony, President Akufado stressed the need for more private public partnership to develop STEM education across the country. He urged students to be prepared to acquire knowledge and skills beyond the traditional classroom walls. As we celebrate 150 years of Kimbu Senior High School, let us take pride in the remarkable legacy of this institution. But more importantly, let us look to the future and with collective effort, ensure that we are equipping our young people with the knowledge, skills, and values they need to succeed in the 21st century. I cannot express how deeply happy and proud I am to be back at senior, Kimbu Senior High School and witness its growth and celebrate 150 years of excellence. As I prepare for my impending retirement from office, I want to assure you that my commitment to Kimbu remains unwavering. Mistress of Kimbu Senior High Technical School, Sylvia Lechate, made a special appeal to President Akufado to adopt Kimbu Senior High Technical School as its own and make it a model school. Management is obliged to create a conducive learning community where learners are empowered for the acquisition of the requisite competencies for a successful life. For this purpose, the planning committee appropriately wove the team for the celebration around the vision and the mission of the school thus equipping our future leaders with the 21st century skills, the role of the stakeholders. Our students must be equipped with the 21st century skills, competencies, and values, which include critical thinking, teamwork, leadership, creativity, communication, discipline, and honesty. For his anniversary gift to the school, President Akufado presented a brand new pickup, promised a new school bus, and provided financial support to the smooth organization of the 150th anniversary and speech and prize giving day. That's all for business here on Joy News Today. My name is Winston Taki. I'll be back with the latest update from the Ghana Football Association right after this break. Stay tuned. Welcome to the sports segment on GM Today. My name is Haruna Mubarak. Now, the Ghana Football Association has defended the allowances paid to referees in the Ghana Premier League, insisting that it is an improvement from what the current administration took over. Match officials receive 1,100 Ghana CDs per match, which raises concerns that the amount makes them susceptible to bribes, an assertion GFA President Keto Kreku disagrees with. We had come from a time that via the Anas expose, we had lost 78 referees. At the time, each referee was taking home 660 Ghana cities. We had taken, or we have taken it to 1,100 Ghana cities. We had also entered into a relationship with STC, where match officials paid 50% of, of their transport costs. In fact, we had even offered to pay referees on weekly basis, which they objected to. This is a matter of a fact also. We, we had also introduced other incentives, including the provision of uniforms to referees. We had also introduced communication gadgets in the system. I think currently we have 
close to 60 communication gadgets that helps referees do their work. Chairman, Honorable Chairman, all our referees are not on full-time schedules. They are fully employed elsewhere. A lot of them are teachers, some are doctors, some are lecturers, some are bankers. They have their full-time jobs already, including those who work in the security services. What they do as refereeing, it's not their full-time work. Obviously, if I had a $10 million and I can pay, I will pay to a referee. But what we are offering is not far from being competitive and an enhanced working condition environment than it used to be. And it's time now for showbiz after the heartbreaking eviction of Accra Technical University from Big Chef Tertiary Competition last Sunday, Joy Prime decided to cheer the contestants by surprising them with Ghanaian musical geniuses, Keche. Now, they spoke to the contestants about the importance of working as a team and later joined them in the kitchen to whip up a quick meal. Lois Adeyemi has more in this report. Culinary extravaganza Big Chef Tertiary. So, Ghanaian music hip life duo Keche visit the remaining 16 contestants during their diary session in the Big Chef Mansion. The contestants were pleasantly surprised as they welcomed them for a brief conversation. You ready? Forever, ever, ever. So now the kiss is here. Oh, baby, come and give me kisses. To explode. To explode. So now. You see, you see, you see the funny thing? The way she stands. <laughs> The dynamic duo Joshua and Andrew advise the contestants on the importance of working as a team. According to them, this will help them in the competition and their future careers as chefs. They also encourage them to stay away from negative criticisms on social media and focus on winning the competition as this has contributed to the growth of their career. All the time, project yourself bigger than whatever you see online. Because online can give you pressure. If you listen to our No Darling song, I said, social media will have pressure. Okay? Whatever that they, they will tell us or saying online, that's, that's their opinion. May God pay the beats. Jesus Christ do the backing. Still, somebody will like him. <laughs> you understand? So, critics online, Charlie, don't take them that serious. The contestants later put Keche to work in the kitchen. They were asked to prepare Indomie with the ingredients provided to them. Lois Shola Adeyemi's report read to you. Let's do it together. Oh, baby, come and give. And that's how we wrap up the bulletin. For more news, please log on to my journal My name is Faustina Safo. Good afternoon.